Okay, so we are going to be starting um, lesson four. So distance on the coordinate plane. We're going to be talking about the distance formula and a bunch of other stuff. Apparently, I have stuff that I forgot to erase. <laughs> um, so we are on page 13 in your workbooks. Um, and these will be notes. Remember, you do not have to turn in your notes on Google Classroom. Um, just the assignment, but I just wanted to walk through these notes with you. So... For part one, it is saying, what is the distance and slope between points A and points B? Okay, point A is located at 0, 0, so that's our origin. I'm going to go ahead and label that point A. And then point B is at negative 6, 0. Okay, so we are on the x-axis, um, and that is going to be point B. So if I want to find the distance, I'm just going to count Okay, since this is a horizontal line, I'm just going to count from negative 6 to 0. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so I have 6 units. So the distance between those points is 6 units. Okay, it also asks for the slope. And we kind of talked about this already. The slope of any horizontal line is 0. Okay, um, so then on number two, I'm going to change colors so that we can see it a little better. Um, for two, we're still at point B, okay, and this time we're going from point B to point C, which is at negative six comma four, okay, so I'm going to be here and I'm going to label that point C. Okay, with this, again, we're finding the distance. And since this is a vertical line, again, we can just count from B to C or C to B either way. So we're going to say one, two, three, four units. Okay, so our distance from B to C is four units. Okay, now again, we should know the slope of every vertical line, um, and every vertical line has a slope that is undefined. If you want to label, a lot of the times you'll see me, um, I'm sorry, abbreviate, a lot of the times you'll see me abbreviate this as U and D for undefined. Okay, um, then for number three, we're doing. Um, we're going from point A to point C. So we're here at point A and we're going to point C. So I can't just count the distance between there because that is a non-horizontal, non-vertical line. That's going to be a um, kind of like a slanted line. Um, so we can't just find the distance by counting. Okay, that's not how that one, that's not how that works. So what we want to do is we want to use um, Pythagorean theorem, which is what we did in lesson three. The reason we can use Pythagorean theorem is if you look, we have a triangle between A, B, and C. Okay, so we have that four units here that we counted, and we have six units here that we counted. And this is a right um, triangle because um, that horizontal and vertical line are perpendicular and form that um, 90 degree angle. So we have that um, right triangle using Pythagorean theorem. We can find our dark blue line here or our hypotenuse. So we're gonna find that length between A and C. In order to do that, we have to label, um, we have our hypotenuse and we have a leg here and a leg here. <coughs> so we're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Our a and b are our legs. It does not matter which one you put first. So we're just going to put 4 squared plus 6 squared. And that's going to be equal to our hypotenuse squared, which we don't know yet. That's what we're trying to find, that distance between a and c. So I can say 4 squared is 16 plus 6 squared is 36, and that's equal to x squared. If we combine our 16 and our 36, that gives us 52 is equal to x squared. And we should know by now that we can solve this equation by taking the square root on both sides. Okay, the square and the square root cancel. 
So we're left with just x is equal to the square root of 52. Now, normally, if that was a prime number, we could leave it be, but we actually need to break this down. So I'm going to break this down to 26 and 2. 2 is prime, 26 is not. That can be broken down to 13 and 2. And 13 is prime, and so is 2. Okay, so we've broken this down as far as it will go. Now let's go ahead and find our pairs. We have a pair of 2s here, and we have a loner 13 here. So I can say that x is equal to, I'm going to pull one of those 2s out from my pair. And then that 13 is a loner, so it stays underneath the radical. So my distance between a and c is going to be 2 root 13 units. Okay, now the slope, we have learned how to find slope. We can do rise over run. So um, if I'm finding the rise between a and c, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. So my rise is 4. I went up, so it's definitely positive. Um, and then I need to go to the left, and I'm going to the left 6 units. And since I went to the left, that is actually going to be a negative 6, okay? Because going to the left is a negative direction. So I end up with rise of 4, run of negative 6. Now, um, I don't want you to leave that fraction as it is because that can be reduced. Um, so this reduces to negative 2 over 3. That negative sign can go uh, to the 2, it can go to the 3, it does not matter. That's why I just, <coughs> excuse me, I just kind of stuck it out front here, okay? Now we're going to go through a little bit of vocabulary. Um, so with this vocab, um, blank is the part of a line consisting of two endpoints and all points in between. So this is what we call a segment, a line segment. Okay, so the segment, it would be if I had, like, let's say A and B, okay? The segment would be everything in between A and B, okay? And then it would have those endpoints. So the endpoints are whenever you have points on each end of your line. Now, if you have a line, that's where these arrows come in. Okay, so a line goes on and on forever. A segment stops. So it, in this case, it would stop at a and point A and point B. Okay, so it says name a segment using two points. Okay, and those would be capital letters with a segment symbol on top. So... Like if I wanted to name segment AB, I would say AB, and then the segment symbol they're talking about is just a segment like that on top. Okay, make sure you don't put the arrows on the ends, otherwise then that means you would be talking about line AB, and we want to talk about segment AB. So, um, number four kind of goes back to example um the very first three examples here, it says blank in the previous example was two root 13 units long. So if you look the distance that was two root 13 is this distance here. And that was the distance between point A and point C. So we can say line segment AC and we would label it just like that. So line, or I'm sorry, segment AC is two root 13 units long. Okay, then it says, well, which one of these from the previous example was six units long? And that time we're talking about the one from example one. Okay, so we're talking about the distance between A and B. So that means that line segment AB in the previous example was six units long. Okay, so we're just practicing um, with how we write a segment and how we label that, okay? Blank means that two segments are the same length. So this is congruent segments. That means that they are the same length. You have two congruent segments. Okay? And we 
um, abbreviate congruent by putting an equal sign. We talked about this in the last lesson too. An equal sign with a squiggle on top. That is not the technical term, but that is what a congruency sign looks like. An equal sign with a squiggle. Okay, so we're going to use um, the Pythagorean theorem like we did in example three to complete example five. So it says determine the length of AB. So if we're looking at AB, we're looking at A being at 1 comma 4. So we're going to be right here. I'm going to label that A. And then we're looking at B being at 13 comma 9. So B is going to be up here. Okay. If we draw our line to connect those two, okay, we are want to find that length. <laughs> and if you look back up to example three, we had to find that length by using the Pythagorean theorem. That's what we did right here. Okay. So we're going to do that again. So we want to create a right triangle. So we're going to draw in a horizontal line. All the way to where B is going to go up or so where we can go up to B. And then we're going to draw in that vertical line. And we want to count what those side lengths are because those are going to be our legs of our right triangle. Because remember, a vertical and horizontal line create that 90 degree angle there, creating a right triangle. So if we count from A to this point here, we have a um, segment that is 12 units long. Then if we count from that point again to point B, we have a segment that is five units long. Okay, so at this point, I have my legs of my right triangle, and I want to find the distance from A to B, and that's going to be my hypotenuse. So I can find that by using the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to label that side X. So my legs, so I'm going to say 12 squared plus 5 squared is equal to my hypotenuse squared. 12 squared is 144. 5 squared is 25. And that's equal to x squared. So I'm going to combine that 144 and 25. And that gives me 169 is equal to x squared. Now, we know by now, hopefully, that we can take the square root of both sides to get rid of that x squared and just make it an x because the square root and the square cancel. And we get x is equal to 13 because the square root of 169 is 13. That is a perfect square. So we can say that AB, segment AB, is equal to... 13, and we're just going to say units because we don't have a measurement there. So that is one way to find distance whenever we're on the coordinate plane. Now, there is another way to find distance, and that is what we call the distance formula. They really got creative with it, with the naming of it. So um, to find distance, we can also use the distance formula which the distance formula, we say D is equal to, so distance is equal to the square root. Draw a really long square root symbol because we're taking the square root of X2 minus X1, and we're squaring that quantity, plus Y2 minus Y1, and we're squaring that quantity. Okay, I know that distance formula looks scary, um, but we're gonna once we start using it, it's really not going to be that bad. I promise. <coughs> so let's use that distance formula to complete number six. So it says, what is the distance between these two points? So those two points are really big points. So we don't want to graph those on a graph. We, and then we don't want to sit there and count and see how many our horizontal and vertical lines are like we did um, in example five. So we can use that distance formula. Now, 
the x2 and x1, that means your second x value and your first x value and your second y value and your first y value. So if we're labeling a coordinate, um, like c would be x comma y, that's how we label our coordinate, and then x comma y for d as well. All that's saying is that if this is the first x coordinate we're talking about and this is the y coordinate, first y coordinate, that means this is 2 and that's 2 because those are the second x and y that we're talking about. So I would definitely make sure that you are labeling your points so that you don't get confused and that, that way you can just plug them into your formula. So we have the distance is equal to, we're going to draw that big long radical, and then we can just plug in our point. So we're going to say x2 is 25 minus, because we have our minus sign here, our x1, which is negative 15. We can end that parenthesis and we square that whole thing, okay? Then we're going to say plus our y2 is 90 minus our y1, which is 40. And we square that entire quantity. Okay, so really we're just plugging in the numbers that we know our x and y values are. So at this point, we can just um, combine some stuff here. So we can say if we have a minus and a minus, that actually ends up becoming a plus. We should know that from last year. So 25 plus 15 gives us 40. And we still have to square that because we still have that 2 out here. Plus 90 minus 40 gives us 50. And again, we have to square that because we have that 2 there. Okay. We can then say, well, we have 40 squared, which is 1,600, 1,600. And 50 squared, which is 2,500. And that gives me a total of 4,100. Now, we have the square root of 4,100. That is not a prime number, so yes, we do have to break that down. It's not as bad as it looks, I promise, because we do have to find that exact value. So, <coughs> in order to find the exact value, we're going to break this down. I broke mine down to 41 and 100. Okay. Let's see, 41, I think. Let's see, 41 divided by six. Yeah, 41 is prime. So we're going to circle that. And we can break 100 down to 10 and 10. We're still not prime there, though. So we're going to break that down again to 5 and 2. And then 5 and 2. Okay? And 5s are prime, and so are the 2s. Okay. At this point, we want to look for our pairs. 41 does not have a pair, so that's our loner. Then we have a pair of twos here. And we also have a pair of fives here. I know that's a little sloppy, but we do have a pair of twos and a pair of fives. So, knowing that, I can bring a one of my fives out from my pairs and I can bring one of my twos out from my pairs. Okay. And then underneath the radical, oops, let's see. Sorry guys. I get 41. Okay. So it ends up being five times two is 10 root 41 as my exact answer. So 10 root 41, and we're gonna say units again. You can abbreviate units with just a U. Okay, the approximate, it says round that to the nearest 10th in the directions. So we're just gonna take the square root of 41 
and we're gonna multiply that by 10. And that gives me 64.03. And since it wants it to the nearest tenth, we're only going to this decimal place, so one, one spot after the decimal. And since this three is less than five, that zero will stay the same, and we don't want that three there. Oops. Now, I know that that just looks like 64, um, but since it does say to the nearest tenth, you still want to have that tenths place, so you still want to have that zero there, and that's going to also be units. Okay, that's as far as we're going to go um, with day one of notes. We will finish up the notes tomorrow for on page 14, but we are going to stop there at example six.